Hello and welcome back to another edition of Teacher Talks and friends, I've got an awesome one for you today. Don't be scared, but inside this package right here is a book with 16 dinosaurs in it. I know, pretty scary, huh? Listen, this is straight from Jerry Pilata over there in Boston, Massachusetts. He let me know that he was going to send me a, a copy of his newest book, that's the newest Ultimate Rumble, right? Here's some of the other Ultimate Rumbles. This one right here, though, should be Ultimate Dinosaur Rumble. And he told me he was going to send a little bit of a care package, so I can't wait to see what else is in here. So in today's video, we're going to do an unboxing. We'll check out what's in this package. I'll take everything out of there for us. Also, I'm going to pause the video so Teacher Talks can read the book. And then I'm going to give you a book review. And I'll let you know, is this another Grand Slam from Jerry Pilata? All right, guys. Also in today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you why I am going to include one more person into my Hall of Fame. So that brings us to four. And I'm talking about authors and artists as well. And the reason those four people are in there is because they have changed reading and the way kids can learn from reading. And they have made it way more exciting. I'll dive into that later in the video as well. But for now, let's open up this package. Let's see what's in here. All right, guys, check it out. Here's everything that was in the care package. So two copies of the Ultimate Dinosaur Rumble book. And actually, Jerry signed both of them. Thank you very much. Very cool. And we've got a whole bunch of bookmarks over here. And these are the new bookmarks, of course, Ultimate Dinosaur Rumble bookmarks. Go to Jerry's website and you can print these off. Cool. All right. And then we've got some of these guys here. They're almost, they kind of remind me of like baseball cards. But look at some of these pictures. That is awesome. Okay, penguins. Where do you think Jerry is here? He's got a heavy coat on, looks a little cold. Always smiling though. I'll tell you what, some people like their jobs and some people love their jobs. You can tell that Jerry really loves what he does. So a little bio on the back here that he's from Boston, Massachusetts and comes up. Look at this. He wrote his first book in 1985. Very, very cool. And he said, <laughs> that's funny. I was just saying that because it says I have the best job in the world right there. And don't forget, while the Who Would Win books, in my opinion, are just phenomenal. I mean, really have changed education. Um, he has written a lot of really awesome books. That Extinct book I haven't seen yet, and I would like to see that one. And uh, he sent me a whole bunch of books that I read, and he's done a phenomenal job. And by the way, while we're here, I am going to dive into that new book, I promise. But just check this out. So here's jerrypalata.com. Um, you go to his website, and that's to get those bookmarks. And also, he's on uh, YouTube now and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So you can just search under Jerry Pilata and get some more information on him. Very, very cool. All right, that's enough talk, and let's get to it. Who would win Ultimate Dinosaur Rumble? I am so excited. All right, so let's talk a little bit here about how this works. So there's 16 dinosaurs, right? 16 dinosaur bracket. Here's all the dinosaurs right here. All right. And by the way, I tell the students in my classroom, do your best and forget the rest. Especially when you're trying to do something like pronounce some of these dinosaurs' names, just do your best and don't worry about it, okay? Okay, here's round one. It's a Kent Kentarosaurus versus a Megalosaurus, all right? And so these two guys are going to battle right here, and the winner moves on to here. And then also, these next two dinosaurs are going to battle, and the winner of those two moves to here. And then in round two, these two winners will face each other, and the winner moves to round three, right? And then don't forget, down here, there's more dinosaurs. The winner moves on. The winner moves on. And then they get to this championship bracket right here, and this winner will go against the winner from down here and all these dinosaurs down in here. And this will be the championship match to see who is the ultimate dinosaur rumble champion. So here's what's really cool about the way Jerry puts this together. I've taught nonfiction. I've taught it for many years. Nonfiction, if you love nonfiction, the students absolutely love it. So for you teachers and parents out there, if your student is not getting a good mixed reading, and what I mean by that is, yes, they should read some of those graphic novels. I'm all for it, but that should be about a third of the reading-ish. And yes, they should read a whole bunch of those chapter books, and The Magic Tree House is absolutely wonderful at that, and there's some amazing books out there as well, but that should be about a third of their reading. And then also, a third of the reading should be nonfiction, learning these real things, learning about these creatures and other things. So this is a great way. If, if you have a student who doesn't like to read nonfiction, try who would win, right? I don't care if you like dinosaurs or not. 
you're going to want to read this book because it's like a big old battle between these dinosaurs. So if you like dinosaurs, you're going to love this book. If you don't like dinosaurs, you're probably still going to love this book. It's like a big tournament. So what's really cool here is that Jerry is going to teach us all right, how the contest works. And he's going to give us information about these different dinosaurs as we go. And here's like it says round one, match one. And you're going to have so much fun with this that you don't even realize how much you're growing your brain, how much knowledge you're gaining about all these dinosaurs. So very, very cool. Hey, I even uh, I went ahead and I bookmarked. There was a page. Here's one, two. Check out this page right here. And it does a good example of what I'm going to try to explain of why Jerry does such a great job here. Okay, so first of all, all right, Teacher Talks, do your best with that name. Boy, that's a big one. Okay, Yang, Yang Chunosaurus. Yang Chunosaurus, I don't know. I could be totally wrong on that. Was discovered in China. When its remains were first discovered, people thought they were real dragon bones. Some people in other places also once believed this. Yang Chungasaurus was bipedal. Bipedal. I'm a teacher. I don't know what that means. But here's what Jerry does a nice job of. He says, look, I know that that's a, a kind of a tough word. So I'm going to give you the definition right here. Bipedal means an animal that walks on two legs. An animal that walks on two legs. Very, very cool. And throughout these Who Would Wins, Jerry does an absolutely wonderful job of telling you things like, hey, I'll tell you what, let's, let's keep going on here. Look at this, uh, okay, Taurosaurus, right? Taurosaurus had the largest skull of any animal that ever lived on land. The largest skull. Its skull, so just its skull, was as big as an elephant. So just this part here was as big as an elephant. This thing was huge. And it tells you right here that Taurosaurus means a perforated lizard. Perforated lizard. Hmm. I'm not sure why. Well, look right here. Definition. Perforated means having holes. Taurosaurus had holes in its shield-like skull. So he's teaching us, look, here's the names, and here's why those are the names, and here's evidence that supports uh, what, what he is saying here. So really cool. Frill fact. The back of the Taurosaurus's skull is called the frill. Ah, so the back of its skull. So I'm thinking this guy right here is called the frill. Think about how much knowledge you have gained, how much you've grown your brain in me just reading this one little page. All right, guys, listen, this is one to go out and get. If you saw my last video, oh, look at that, and then it's going to explain who won and how they won and why they won. All right, I don't want to give away too much here, but I can tell you, I kind of breezed through this book, and it's fun. It's exciting, and I was a little bit surprised, so I made a prediction here without even really reading all the pages on who I thought might be making it far. And then I also, as I read, was gaining my evidence and thinking, okay, that's going to really work well as the battles move on. But I did not get it right. I did not get the winner right. So I challenge you to see if you can. Now, I'm not going to read this book to you. I want you to go purchase this book. Buy it on Scholastic. That's a great way to do it. Go to Jerry's website, jerrypilata.com. That's a great way to do it. All right, friends. I hope you appreciated this book review. By the way, if you're wondering what reading level, I believe this comes in about a P, maybe up into a Q level on our guided reading level. And where does that put it? About an end of third grade book, somewhere in that ballpark. I can tell you that the Who Would Win books, though, Jerry does a really nice job on the challenging words of making them so that they are pretty readable. So if you're not quite at that level, maybe get some support from mom, dad, brother, sister. And if you are at that level, you are going to be in for a treat. Let me tell you one more thing I like about this book is that this one is kind of in the pamphlet style. And what I like about that is that this book is four bucks, $3.99 on Jerry's website. It makes it really inexpensive. So you can get this guy, get it on your doorstep in just a couple days. Okay, now I'm going to change the subject a little bit. The final thing I want to talk about today is I'm going to add a fourth person into the Teacher Talks Reading Hall of Fame and he's not even an author. Okay, let's talk about who's in it so far. So we've got Dave Pilkey, and also on Teacher Talks Dog Man, you can learn all about Dave Pilkey. And Dave Pilkey's artist, who, what's his name? You know, Jose Garibaldi. 
And between the two of them, they have made Dogman into an absolute sensation and also Captain Underpants. Ricky Ricotta's Mighty Robot, absolutely amazing. Well, in the nonfiction category, Jerry Pilata has done the same thing. He has made it so much fun to read and learn and grow your brain about these nonfiction topics. Jerry, congratulations to you. So here's who's getting brought into my Hall of Fame today. It's the illustrator, Rob Bolster. And I'll tell you what, if you go onto Jerry's YouTube channel, go to his playlists and look down there and you can actually see and meet Rob Bolster. And you can even show you, he shows you on his computer just a little bit on how he helps bring these different animals, dinosaurs, bugs, jungle animals, how he brings all of them to life so that it makes it so exciting for us to do this reading. Hey guys, listen, I hope you appreciated this video. If you did, give it that thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. It's a great way to say thank you for making these videos. Also, if you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe. Go check out Jerry's website too. He's got a great one over there and his YouTube channel as well. And don't forget, if you're looking for Dogman, we have a second channel now, Teacher Talks Dogman. If you wanna become a subscriber to that, look in the description down below and I'll put an easy link so you can go check it out. All right, friends, I hope you appreciate this video. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to reread it. And by the way, my own third going into fourth grader keeps telling me, dad, dad, there's two copies. Which one's mine? Can I please? Can I please? Well, guess what? As soon as I'm done with this, we're going to go read it together. And I know he's standing behind me right now saying, hurry up, dad, hurry up. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.